Well, with the wind whistling in the trees, it's a good day to do some tackle prep. And something that still seems to give a lot of anglers problems is picking the right jig head to go with their soft plastics. It's not rocket science, but if you get it wrong, you won't catch as many fish. It begins with picking a good brand of jig head. And these mustard data jigs are great. The design of the head means that they've got a great action when you jig them. They're also made from a nice hard material so they don't get dinged up too much. They've got a good hook keeper and of course being mustard, they've got one of the best hooks in the business. It's sharp, strong and really gets the job done. But they make a whole range of these data jig heads in various weights and hook sizes. Which is the right one? for you on a given day to fish a particular soft plastic. Well, you really need to be a little bit uh, adaptable and variable when it comes to picking your jig heads. There are several factors to take into consideration, but the two most important are the weight of the jig head and the size of the hook. So let's have a look at those two absolute basics of jig head selection. When it comes to weight, we need enough weight to be able to cast to where the fish are and also to get our soft plastic down to the depth where the fish are holding, which is often right on the bottom or very near to it. But the other side of the equation is we don't want an anchor on our soft plastics. It's a bit like bait fishing. The lightest sinker you can get away with when you're bait fishing will catch you more fish. It's exactly the same with jig head design. In nine cases out of 10, the lightest jig head that you can get away with for the prevailing conditions will catch you the most fish. That's because it makes the lure behave more naturally in the water and it also spends more time sinking through that bite zone, what I like to call hang time as it travels down through the water column. So you're going to have to base it on what the current's doing, how deep the water is, if you're in a boat, how fast the boat is drifting. You want to be able to get to the bottom, but you want the lure to take a little bit of time to get there. That's why they make so many different weights of jig head, even in the same size hook. Now, hook size is an interesting one. There's a fair bit of latitude here, but obviously you don't want to go ridiculous and put a tiny little plastic on a great big hook or bury a little tiny hook in a great big plastic, something like that. You put a small hook in that, it's not gonna have enough exposure, you're not gonna hook the fish that bite. I'll give you a little tip. As a rough rule of thumb, if you match the gape of the hook to the widest point of the soft plastic and they're roughly similar, that's a good starting area. Because that hook's gonna be going through the middle of the plastic, it's gonna have great hook exposure. And there's a fair bit of latitude either side of that, but it's a good starting point. So, we've looked at weight, and it's worth stressing that point again. The lighter the jig head you can get away with, the more fish you'll catch in most situations. You don't want to go ridiculously light so that you can't get down to them, but keep it so you've got that great action going through the water. And hook size, just match the plastic to the hook, and as a rough rule of thumb, the depth through the deepest part of the plastic roughly equivalent to the gape of the hook. Remember those basics and use a quality jig head like Mustard's data jigs and you'll catch a lot more fish on your soft plastics. Well, we're in over 50 metres of water here, about 180 feet on the old scale, and I've only got a 21 gram jig head on. This is what I was saying about minimising the weight that you need to get down. It's just enough for me to get to the bottom. And as this soft plastic wafted down through the last five or six metres towards the bottom, whack, the fish picked it up. A lot of people would go straight to 40, 50, 60 grams in this depth of water, and they'd certainly get their, their lure down, but I don't believe they catch quite as many fish. I don't know what this is, but it's a pretty solid fish. I'm targeting uh, snapper and other reef fish, but I've got a funny feeling that one of the pelagic or semi-pelagic species picked this plastic up as it's wafted down through the, the water column. It's unreasonably light gear, just a 20 pound braid and a 20 pound leader. The tail beats that I've got there though, the way the rod tip's just going thump, 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 and also the fact that it's circling a little bit. Reasonable fish. Another factor that not enough people think about is the way that the soft plastic that you put on a jig head actually influences the sink rate. 
If I was to throw that bare jig head in the water, it'd sink at a certain sink rate, so many metres per second or whatever, depending on the density of the water and how fast the boat was drifting. But as soon as I put a soft plastic on that tail, it slows the sink rate. The soft plastic acts as a parachute. That might be quite minor in the case of a very slim line plastic without any dangly bits and without much action. That's going to sink at a very similar rate to that bare jig head. But as my plastic becomes bulkier and has more action, it's going to slow that sink rate up until I get to something like this, which has got dangly bits hanging off it everywhere, same size jig head, but it's probably gonna sink at about half the rate of that bare jig head. So bear that in mind when you're picking the right jig head for the conditions as well. You need to play around with these variables, try different weights, different shapes and sizes of soft plastic to get down there on the day. Be adaptable and think about what your lure is actually doing in the water column. This is where all the power is in the bottom end of the rod. You just keep it down fairly low and just do short little pump and lifts to recover line. And don't be afraid to just lightly put your fingers on the skirt of the spool just increase the pressure. I've stopped him. Had a clear eyeball on this fish yet. It may even be a long tail tuna, which is pretty amazing when you consider I hooked it a couple of metres off the bottom. Even when tuna and other pelagic fish are not showing on the surface, it's still there somewhere. Long tail. Absolutely inhaled my soft plastic. He wanted that whip bait, it's down there somewhere. He's not even particularly big. What a fight. There are so many good things about these mustard data jig heads, and one of the things I like the most is they actually have the weights stamped into the head. So I can pick this up out of my tackle box and instantly know that it's 42 grams. And then there are 21 grams and 10 and a half grams and 7 grams and you need a fair range. If you're gonna fish in different situations, different depths of water, different currents and drift rates in your boat, you really need that full range of jig heads. So stock up with some of these mustard data jig heads. They're one of the best in the game. Roger.